Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number one in the command injection module titled OS Command Injection Simple Case. All right, let's get started. This lab contains an OS command injection vulnerability in the product stock checker. The application executes a shell command containing user supplied product and store IDs and returns the raw output from the command in its response. To solve the lab, execute the whoami command to determine the name of the current user. All right, so the target goal of the exercise is to exploit an inband command injection. And I say inband because the raw output from the command is returned to us in the response. And in order to confirm that we exploited uh, the command injection, we're going to execute the whoami command, which outputs the name of the user of the system. All right, let's access the lab. And while that's loading, We'll open up Burp Community Edition, hit OK, hit Next, close and start Burp. And I really need to update my Burp version because I'm still running on the 2020 version. All right, so set proxy proxy to send requests to Burp. And now if we click on any page in the application, for example, the view details page, it should be intercepted in burp and it is. So let's set intercept to off and go to HTTP history and from there view the requests that we're performing. All right, let's go down and let's click on check stock. And you could see over here, it's performing a post request. And if we send that to repeater, and look at it from repeater, you could see that it takes in two parameters, the product ID and the store ID. Now, because of the description of the lab, we know that this is vulnerable to command injection. However, if you're testing a real application, what you would do is you would test each parameter for uh, potential injection vulnerabilities. And so that's what we're gonna do with the product ID field. You could see over here, it takes in a one and the store ID takes in a one. Now, I'm not sure if both of them are vulnerable or maybe just one of them is vulnerable or maybe none of them are vulnerable. So we need to uh, test it ourselves. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add the and character, which allows me to chain commands together in bash. And then I'm going to run the who am I command. Now I might get an error over here just because of how the command is structured in the backend. However, I don't have the source code for this application. So we're going to tweak our command injection based on the response of the application. So the first thing we need to do is control U to URL encode it, and that doesn't seem to be working for me. So copy, and then control U to URL encode it, hit send, and let's see how the application responds. So right away, I can see over here that it's telling me I'm running into an error. So I'm trying to run the who am I command. However, I have an error on line number five saying it's an unbound variable. And the reason is probably that I'm running a command over here. However, um, it takes in other variables. And so it's ruining uh, the command in the back end. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a hash character, which comments out the rest of the command. Let's control U to URL encode it. And I keep clicking on shift U and that's why it's not doing it correctly. So control U, hit send. And here we go. We no longer get an error because we commented out the rest of the command that was causing us the error. And we get the value of the user that is running on the system. And if you go over here, you could see that it says, congratulations, you solved the lab. Now let's take this a step further and look at the code in the application. Now, just nature of command injection vulnerabilities, it just means that it means that you've gained remote code execution. And so you can run whatever command you want. It's not just the who am I command. So what we're going to do is we're going to output the content of the script just to see what the script is doing. So let's remove the has sign, hit send. And over here, it outputs uh, the script that it's running. So let's copy that. And then instead of running the who am I command, I'm going to say cat, which outputs the content of the script and then paste the script path over here. And then again, add the has sign to comment out the rest of the command and then control U to URL encode it and hit send. 
And here we go. This is the content of the Bash script that is vulnerable to command injection. And you could see the culprit over here. So they're using the eval command, which is used in Bash in order to execute OS commands. However, they're taking in two inputs. So number one and number two, which are likely the product ID and the store ID. And they're taken directly from the user input. So without any validation, which means over here that not only is the product ID vulnerable, but the store ID is vulnerable as well. And so you've got a command injection right over here. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the command injection in order to output the content of the user that is running on the system. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we first exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.